Okay, I'm in 1.8 Bountiful. I'm trying to record using uh, Audacity because when I record through this uh, video recording software, which is free Bandicam, uh, it comes out really funky. Plus, since I'm having so much trouble recording at all because of the wear and tear on my computer, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try to record audio because it's going to be screwing up a lot. I mean, separate audio separate from the game. Oh, that's nice. Why are there zombies dying? Uh, I don't know. Alright, so I have bad news, and I thought that I would just go ahead and record this because I've been watching the Twitter feeds and so on. I found out some stuff about what's going on with um, Mojang and servers that's uh, pretty scary stuff. And I thought I would try to do a demo of it in video, especially now that I have more than 30 minutes, but it means I have to keep an eye on my recording because I'm still using freeware Bandicam, you know. And these animals are tearing everything up. Okay, so here's what I found out. Uh, you know Mojang changed their EULA, the End User License Agreement. Well, they didn't change it so much as they just decided it's time to enforce it. This has had a really severe impact on people running servers who are trying to recoup the, which means to regain the money that they've invested in their servers by selling things from the game. And Mo Yang said, no, you can't do that because that's our intellectual property. Uh, things inside the game belong to us. You can't sell them without our permission. So it's caused a lot of trouble because people are saying, well, how can I run a server if I can't charge people for something like an enchanted sword or, you know, buffs and stuff, you know. And But the thing is, see, I do agree with Mo Yang that it was very problematic because Little kids were spending a lot of money on stuff to, in order to play on servers. I mean, sometimes they were like stealing their parents' credit cards and stuff. No, I don't think the parents are stupid. I think that, like, Google made an app just recently so that kids can one-click credit card stuff. Uh, and they got fined for it, and they're having to pay a penalty for it now. Uh, because little kids, it was like, you know, little kids could just, type in credit card numbers that, without their parents' permission, you know? So I understand why Mo Yang is cracking down because they don't want a bad reputation as being like jerks who are stealing from little kids and stuff. I get that. Here's the problem. People were writing modifications to the game. You know, like, uh, okay, look at rabbits, for instance. Rabbits and horses, they weren't part of the game before. Uh, there was a bunch of people that wanted to make modifications to the basic game. They're called mods. And they came up with rabbits. Remember, uh, what's it called? Mo creatures? They came up with rabbits and horses. And Mo Yang uh, consulted with those people. Um, the people who run Mo Yang now, like Dinnerbone, he's involved with Bucket. He was, he was working on Bucket for years. You know, Dinnerbone used to be part of Bucket. In fact, I think Dinner, I'm not going to swear to this, but I believe that Dinnerbone may actually be one of the creators of Bucket. Bucket is a thing where you can put modifications on servers, right? Okay, Mo Yang bought Bucket. Now here's the thing. A lot of people work for free on Bucket, basically. It was called Open Source, which means uh, whatever coding they came up with on Bucket was free. Anybody could use it. Anybody could adapt it. Anybody could modify it. There are some licenses involved in that that say um, you created the work. They, there are some licenses that say you, Mr. Bufu, created this work. You created this work, all right? So you, there is a sort of a kind of a license that says you are the creator. But basically, the stuff on that is free. You can do carrots now, can't you? You don't really need me, do you? I know. Boy, you guys are loud. So this one guy, I'm going to call him Wolf because I can't remember his name. Um, it's something like Wolf. All right. This one guy did about, they're saying, about one-third of all the work that was done on Bucket with creating stuff for people 
to modify Minecraft. And that includes a lot of the goodies on servers that, okay, like protection. If you build a space, you can put a protective wall around it so people can't grease your stuff or blow it up or steal your junk, you know? That's a modification, and it's usually a, bu a bucket servers have a lot of these. Uh, all kinds of stuff is added on. Um, but the source code was pretty much open source, which means anybody could access, modify, tweak, change, improve, whatever the code. But this wolf guy, he had pretty much a... Everybody who worked on it had a sort of a license that said, Wolf created this, right? Doesn't mean it wasn't free for people to use. It means Wolf created it. Well, yesterday, Wolf did a thing. He said, this is my intellectual property. I invented this stuff. Mo Yang does not have my permission to use this stuff anymore. So I'm filing what's called a DMCA, um, which means shut it down until I until we have a chance legally to prove who has the rights to stuff. So what he did was basically he shut down Bucket. He shut down Bucket. Now Mo Yang owns it, you know. Mo Yang can do whatever they want with it. But he's saying, nope, Mo Yang can't use Bucket uh, without legal permission to do so. What this means is all the stuff he ever wrote, all the stuff he ever wrote is not free to use until the legal stuff is untangled, okay? But it's, and so that means, I don't know what that's going to mean for servers. Are servers going to have to not use this stuff? Is it going to stop functioning? Is Mo Yang going to say, all right then, that code is no longer viable, you can't use it anymore. So what happens to servers if that's true? Does it mean that just servers in the future won't be able to access it? Here's the other thing. Moyang could just say, okay, this is a big tangled up mess. You guys have screwed up our bucket stuff, and we don't want to goof around with you anymore, so we're closing bucket. See the problem? So, this is a really, really bad time to open a server because I don't know if bucket things are going to be available, if we're going to be able to use them. I don't know if Moyang's going to pull the plug. I suspect Mo Yang wants to run its own servers and wants control of its own servers. And I don't know how that's going to work because it's really going to stifle creativity. One of the best things about this game has been people making modifications and so on. Um, it's really added tremendously to the game. It's also, uh, why am I trying to save all these crops? Because I'm obsessed. Um, it's, it's been part of the creative process of the whole game. The reason the game is as good as it is is because everybody has worked on it together, users and developers. It's not just the developer's game. The game is much better now. No, no offense to Notch, because you know, I'm playing 1.73 beta, and she that game is hard, and it's really interesting. Notch did a fabulous job on this game. He really did. Um, and I think his creativity and his unique style of doing things has will, has always had and will always have a lasting impact on how creative and brilliant and fascinating this game is to people. I really do. It's not just influence. Now, he took a previously pre-existing game and he just worked it and tweaked it until it was... I, I know the guy who made the first game, which was also open source, wishes that he thought of this. So the game started out brilliant. It really did. He took a pre-existing idea of a sort of a building game that was open source, and he tweaked it, and he played with it, and he made a great game. But things have changed. You know how I'm complaining about how dark it is in 1.7.3? This game was dark, dude. It's a beautiful game. And part of the reason it is a beautiful game is because it has grown. People have changed it. Throughout the life of the game, the, the people have changed it. So the game is really fascinating and fabulous now, and a lot of people have contributed a lot to it. Now, Mo Yang can just say, that's it, we've had it. We're not going to do it anymore. So what's happened now is that all that coding that everybody has done for, what is it, four, three, four years now? All that coding may not be anything anymore, because if 
Moyang decides they've had a belly full of this junk, um, they might just say, pull the plug, we don't want to deal with Bucket anymore. So this is not a good time to have a server. It's not a good time to start a server. It's not a good time to restart a server because bad things are happening. So I'm not going to be restarting my server until any of this gets ironed out. It really is a shame. Now, I understand these people who did this open source stuff, they wanted to freely share things. It's like science. You know, you don't say, oh, I own this experiment. You say, here's the experiment I'm doing. Here's what I came up with. What do you think of it? Give me your opinion. Give me feedback. What can I do to improve it? What ideas do you have? That sort of thing. That's sort of the way Minecraft has always been. And it's been one of the strengths of Minecraft. It really has. It's been like the strength of Minecraft. Anybody could contribute to it. And everybody influenced it. And the game grew. But now, that's going to change. And what happens to creativity when money is involved is not necessarily a healthy thing. Sometimes money is a real motivation for people to do creative work and get stuff done and uh, experiment with new ideas that have never been thought of before and that sort of thing. Main problem with money, though, is that the people who pay the money get to say what's valuable and what isn't, what they want their money spent on. So people might not um, develop ideas that they otherwise would have if money hadn't been involved because the person paying the money is pretty much directing the research and saying this is, this is what I'm interested in. And maybe they don't have the vision to think of what is really, truly interesting. So it's a real problem having people being more concerned about the money than they are about um, what's good for everybody. It's always a problem, right? Well, the other thing I'm thinking of is, this is purely speculation. Please don't take this as some sort of fact. I'm just wondering. Mo Yang has been more and more and more invested in controlling servers. They created Realms, which is not, it's a pretty inferior server system, it really is. And then, this whole thing came up with uh, the EULA, that they're very worried about um, servers selling their intellectual property on servers to fund the servers. Mod makers were like, wait a minute, we produce these things. We need to be able to earn a little bit of money for this because we can't afford to do it for free. And we can't just run servers for free. We can't create mods for free. We have to be able to earn a living. And Mo Yang pretty much just said, we'll find another way to earn a living because you're not going to do it this way. I have a very funny feeling about this. Um, you know Yogg's Cast? Some of the oldest players, Minecraft players, YouTube players in the game are were associated with Yogg's Cast. And now some of the most influential, like Bebop Vox, uh, well, it was a really good place to find out about innovations in the game and so on. But there's a serious problem with it. Disney bought it. Walt Disney now owns Yogcast. And you're saying, oh, well, they're an entertainment company. So what? They'll do good for the, they'll do good for YouTube. They'll do good for the YouTubers. This is a good thing, right? Remember what I just said about money? and how the people who pay the money get to say how things are going to be done because they're the ones paying the money. I've been very worried about Yogg's Cast because of the association with Disney. They didn't buy Yogg's Cast directly. They bought the company that owns Yogg's Cast. But they can have an influence on Minecraft Let's Plays now. And that tells me also that Disney is interested in Minecraft. And when Disney gets interested in something, it changes. Uh, look at their films. The Mary Poppins you see done by Disney is not Mary Poppins. Neither is Peter Pan, the original Peter Pan. They change things to suit their business model 
to sell merchandise and to sell their product and to sell their brand, their name. So what's going to happen to Minecraft? Well, the th reason I'm worried about this association between Yogg's Cast and Disney is that this game has come to the attention of huge corporations now. Corporations that, in association with other corporations, sell hamburgers and french fries that aren't healthy and soda pops that make people sick and use water that belongs to other people for their own factories and their own money making. Um, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, companies like that are all associated with big corporations like Disney. Not just Disney, but, you know, I'm using this as an example. So what happens to Minecraft now? I have a bad feeling. This is just speculation. I have a bad feeling that what's really happening is that Minecraft is getting ready to be sold to a large corporation. And the way they had to do that was they had to prepare their game for sale. I think that's what this new release is about. I think that's why it's got a lot of tricksy stuff that little kids will like um, that are that should just be modifications. Uh, rabbits, horses, stuff like that. Uh, okay, you can argue. Why rabbits? I mean, you can argue about the horses. It would be cool for PvP and um, that kind of thing. They're also really good for transportation. Since for some reason the game is trying to encourage us to um, not stay home. I don't know why, because we'll end up with huge maps that are um, unplayable if we're roaming around too much. But why why add these new blocks, for instance? Have you looked at the Guardians? You know what those are. They're just modifications of Silverfish. I want to slow down the sounds they make. They, sound, they r remind me of something that's already in the game. I'm not sure what. And some of the sounds they make sound like speeded up and modified slimes. Guardians sound a lot like slimes. So it's nothing new. Silverfish, Endermites, Guardians. That squishy noise? How hard was it to retexture a few blocks to make, um, oh, diorite and granite and that kind of stuff, huh? And this hokey beam that they do. What is that? That's, that's not Minecrafty at all. When they attack when they attack animals or players, the shards that they drop. Oh, you've seen them on Feed the Beast and so on. Um, the modifications that um, allow you to have more minerals and stuff like that. The game is much easier now. You know, I'm playing 1.7.3 and I'm really seeing how much more challenging the game was when it was darker and there were less options. Like, you can't grow pumpkins. Now that was just an oversight, probably. Or maybe they wanted it to be a rare item in the game. I don't know. They had to add mutton because sheep were an early game item. You only needed them. You were hunting them to try to make beds. After that, you didn't need sheep. So now they've extended the shelf life of sheep by adding mutton and so on. I'm afraid Mo Yang is getting ready to sell this game to a big corporation. Lego's already involved. They've got the Jinx.com for the official merchandise. And Jinx has been given authority by Minecraft to shut down other people who are making non-authorized merchandise. Jinx went after little mom and pop businesses who were making like knitted creepers and selling them on Etsy. And Mo Yang had to tell them, hey, chill that stuff out. They, but they went for the throat. They were going to shut, shut down everything that wasn't authorized by Mo Yang. So I'm worried about the game. I'm also worried that servers are going to be at least throttled and strangled, if not outright shut down, if they're not Mojang Realms servers. And Mojang Realms servers are so inferior to some of the stuff that people have produced. You know, Zuma shut his server down. It's not profitable. It was, it was too burdensome. Um, there were too many variables and problems with running plugins. On the server, there were a lot, a lot of people. There was, of course, always, there's always griefing and people who were up to no good. And I would say probably industrial sabotage. I'm sure there were some 
professionals in this game that would love to see Zuma's creative servers shut down. Competitors? The thing is that Zuma and Doc M, who was working with him, can't possibly keep that server profitable. But what's the loss uh, with XPD gone? Zuma, in his recent videos, is somewhat floundering to get feedback from other people on how to proceed with a project he's working on because he doesn't have that server, so he can't consult with people. So people are sending tweets of imager pictures of ways to work on a farm he's working on, um, and he's having to ask in comments for people to give him feedback and stuff about how he can uh, solve a problem he's trying to solve. Before, all he had to do was just go to his server and um, ask people. People were glad to come and help, you know? So, the creative process has been stifled by the fact that Zuma no longer has access to XPD. It's true. Because money, you know? Uh, Zuma had every right to earn a living uh, or generate an income that would pay for the cost of running that server. He had every right. Uh, how to do that is a whole different discussion that I won't have here. But he had every right, and that server was doing wonderful stuff, and people were collaborating, working together on projects that some of them had never considered before. And Zuma had never considered some of the builders and redstoners before because he'd never heard of them before. So a lot of potential was lost because money. Now, as you know, I'm very low income, and I can't possibly support a server on my own without cooperation and help from other people. I've got some ideas about how to make that happen. I really do, that don't involve the way things are done right now. So I can't operate a server until I find a way to make it profitable, and I have some ideas about how to do that that have not been thought of before. I mean, they, well, they may have been thought of, but nobody's doing them. And it's not just me, it's lots of people. So Mo Yang owns Bucket. The guy operating Bucket, he wanted to quit, take his ball, and go home. Mo Yang said, no, you can't do that because we own it. And then this other guy who wrote a bunch of call code, this wolf guy, said, okay, I own the code that I put in here for the last two, three, four years, whatever, and I'm going to take you down because I have rights to that code. And Mo Yang is now basically without bucket, even though Dinnerbone is a bucket guy. So Mo Yang has several choices. They can fight it legally, retain their control, argue that, hey, look, we own bucket, we own the coding that's in this, Wolf is just out of luck. Or they can let Wolf have his code, in which case Bucket is pretty much torn to shreds. Or they can just say, forget the whole thing, and close Bucket down. So all the little servers that have been using Bucket plugins, maybe we don't matter in compared to a possible contract with Disney. And I'm telling you, 1.8 is looking more and more like they spruced up the game and made it easier for little kids to play up to high levels and it looks to me like Mo Yang is getting ready to sell this game to a big corporation. That's why they're controlling realms, that's why they're controlling the modifications, that's why they're controlling what happens on servers that aren't owned by Mo Yang. I think a big company has said, hey look, this is a really cool thing you've got going here, but there's some real problems with it. We can't control your players. And if we're going to buy your company, we have to control your players. I have a bad feeling about what's going to happen to Minecraft. A really bad feeling. And I hope I'm wrong. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry this is, video's in bad shape, but it's the best I could do. Take care. I'd hug you, but my arms don't bend.